Let's take a look at the hair dryer itself. And as we as we come up the plug here, this is where the power comes in. We have another protective uh, rubber piece and a, and a little holder here that's molded in, which is kind of nice. So you can hang your hair dryer in the bathroom if you if you want to. And uh, then we have our switch. So this uh, allows us to turn the power high, low, and off. And we have these little molded patterns here. And then our funnel that uh, that funnels the air through. And you can see there's a uh, there's a screen on the back and that helps to keep things out. So let's take a look at what's inside. So I'm going to use a Phillips head screwdriver here and just remove these these screws. Now these screws are plated. They're made out of steel and I believe they are they look like they're chrome plated because they're super shiny. And the reason they would do that is that uh, hair dryers are often used in very moist environments like bathrooms and things like that. And so the screws, if they're made out of steel, are going to rust, and so you want to put a, a coating on them that won't rust, and chrome won't rust, so that protects them. And because those screws are visible, they may have also used a bright finish chrome uh, because you can. It looks better than say a painted screw would. Okay, uh, so let's take this apart. It also provides a little better corrosion resistance than paint does. All right, so let's take this apart here, and if you look on the inside. You can see that, uh, again, this was an injection molded part. The mold came together like this, in, and uh, plastic was injected, and then um, injector pins, which you can, almost, you can see the little marks right here, pushed on the uh, part and caused it to drop out. And you can see that, that is, this material is called PP, or poly, it stands for polypropylene, and the ejector pin uh, marks are right here, so they're scattered throughout this to evenly push on it to get it to come out. And you know, there's all these features on the inside of the, of the uh, part. They, they provide uh, structural rigidity and stiffness. They also provide a mounting location for the, uh, the fan housing here. And the uh, screen in the back is uh, looks like it was put on with a machine, pressed against the, the back of the uh, housing here where there's the vent. And uh, it was the, looks like the plastic was heated up and the screen was pushed into the heated plastic so it's held in place. Um, and that's kind of a low cost way to, to hold those pieces together. There's no fasteners there. Uh, fasteners add expense, so that's one of the ways they were able to reduce cost. So we'll set that aside for just a second. And uh, if we come up, we look up inside the uh, switch here. This is, uh, this is where the power comes in. This part right here is very interesting as well. A lot of times you'll see manufacturers will actually tie the power cord in a knot, and in this case, they're they're not tying it in a knot. They run it through this this uh, over this screw uh, screw boss or, or place that the screw goes in. And the reason why they do that is so that you can't pull it out. And you don't want to. You definitely don't want to have a condition where the wire can get pulled away from the switch and and maybe have a free electrical. Uh, contact in there that could touch things and short out and maybe just cause your hairdryer to start stop working so that protects you there so that's one safety that's another safety thing um, so we'll go ahead and pull this switch out and you can see that there's a, a plastic uh, these are plastic uh, brackets that the switch fits nicely into it holds it steady in place and uh, the switch has three different settings and it is See if we can get that to where you can see it. The switch is a uh, it says it's 16 amps at 125 volts or 8 amps at 250 volts. So this switch can handle a fair amount of current. And uh, if you can, if you see, there's a number of different uh, wires leading out from the switch, and they run to the the heater. And this wire right here is connected with this brass connection and since the connection is open there's a clear piece of plastic that's gone over that and that prevents it from contacting the uh, other parts of the switch and shorting out the circuit or creating a, a problem. So we have another little tiny screw right here we're gonna take that screw out and it's the back side of the uh, it's the back side of the switch here and so that held the the front side of the switch in place that's just again an injection molded piece of plastic and then the back side slides in this channel right here like that and it interfaces with the switch itself and uh, it's just a piece of looks like molded acrylic that fits against the uh, the switch and allows allows you to transfer the the movement from the outside to the inside of the of the unit alright so we've got a, a fan here and we've got these two santaprene pieces uh, they're just like rubber molded accent pieces and I think they're mostly there for just design style. 
and we're going to go ahead and pull this out, see if we can get the uh, heater unit out. All right, well, before we take a look at that, let's look at this. So this is our uh, funnel, and as, as you know, the hair dryer heats up, and uh, so that, that heat can, uh, could cause the plastic to get really hot or soft. And so they put this, this piece in here, and this is called a mica sheet, and it basically protects the uh, housing from getting too hot when the heater heats up. And then if you look on the back side here, we've got a, uh, a bracket, a little, a little uh, cover, and this is made out of steel. It's just painted steel, and uh, again, protects things from getting into the heater. And just it just force fits into the end down there, so there's no fasteners. Again, it, it helps to reduce cost. This was injection molded just like this piece was, and the mold came together like this, and from both sides. And uh, then there were pins that pushed the the plastic out once it had hardened. Um, and so that's that. So if we take a look here, we can see that we've got. Uh, nichrome wire. So the, the thing that's fascinating about this this hair dryer is that they take this nichrome wire and they use it as a massive resistor because your your motor doesn't want the full 120 volts AC that comes in from the uh, outlet. It it wants it wants DC power. It needs to run on DC power. It needs to run on 12 volts. So the way they get it down to 12 volts is they use the heater as a resistor to drop the voltage down to 12 volts. So that's kind of an ingenious way of, of, of doing that. And then uh, the heater is made out of this, this, these coils here, and they're, they're called nichrome wire. And, uh, or they're made out of a material called nichrome wire. And nichrome is, a, is an alloy of nickel and chromium. And when electricity is run through it, it heats up. And it heats up in a way that uh, is, is uh, it's very uh, effective at getting hot when power is run through it. But it also doesn't uh, oxidize. So a lot of times when you heat other, uh, up other metals, they'll oxidize, they'll rust, and then uh, you get problems with that. This doesn't do that. It just heats up and then it cools back down and there's no oxidation. So it works really well as, as a heater. And uh, on the front here, you can see there's this... Uh, 90 degree opposed bracket that holds everything 90 degrees apart which which keeps everything working as far as airflow and stuff like that also holds this mica sheet separated and then you can see on the inside we have these brass contacts and uh, they're little brass rivets and they distribute the power around to different parts of the heater and right here this part right here is a uh, bimetallic strip so that bimetallic strip is made out of two pieces of metal, and what it does is when uh, is when the metal is heated to a certain point, it causes the bimetallic strip to bend, and so one piece of metal has a different uh, expansion rate than the other piece of metal, and it causes the strip to bend. So maybe this one on the outside, if this was the the bimetallic strip, this one expands faster than this one, and it causes it to bend. So you could have two different types of metal, like say uh, an alloy called invar and a uh, another piece of metal called copper, and the copper is going to respond to heat at a certain rate, and it's going to expand, and the invar is going to uh, not expand nearly as fast, and it's going to cause that that uh, that uh, switch to open up, and that will shut down the power to the heater. So if it gets too hot, the bimetallic strip will expand, and it will pull itself away from the contact and shut down the heat to the heater, uh, or shut down the electricity to the heater. And you can see we also have a, a diode right here in line that just controls the flow of electricity. It's like a, a, a little electrical valve. And then we have a thermal resistor here. And the thermal resistor, I'm sorry, a thermal fuse. This is called a thermal fuse. And the thermal fuse basically is another safety precaution. If, if temperatures get too high, the fuse will blow and it will shut down the hairdryer and prevent uh, the housing from melting or from the hairdryer from getting too hot and, and potentially blowing air out that could burn you. And so remember the heater has functioned as a resistor and it's dropped the voltage down to, to 12 volts, but we still have... <coughs> It, it's still AC power, which means alternating current. And alternating current, it basically is, is it functions as a sine wave like this. So it, it flows back and forth. And the motor that we have here is designed to run on direct current, so just flowing in a continuous loop. And uh, the way that this unit, uh, this hairdryer deals with that is it has these four 
diodes. You can see them, one, two, three, four. And so what those four diodes do is they, they function like a bridge rectifier and they convert the AC power into DC power. And they do it in a very low cost way. The diodes are very inexpensive. So once the voltage is dropped and the power is converted, the fan begins to spin. Uh, and so the fan turns and it pulls air in and you can see these louvers right here they uh, they help to uh, they help with the airflow so that it blows past the heater in the right way and uh, the inside of the motor I'm not going to take the motor apart in this video we'll do that in, in another one but inside this uh, inside the motor is a uh, copper winding and there are some magnets and the electricity causes the motor to spin and it pulls a, uh, pulls air through past the heater and the reason why you do this is that heated air or hot air uh, can hold a lot more moisture than cool air so it dries your hair a lot more quickly old hair dryers used to be that you know they were about a hundred watts or maybe just a little bit more than that so it took them a long time to uh, dry your hair because they they just didn't have the same amount of heat energy that this one does at 1875 watts this is about as much heat energy as you can generate uh, in a given 20 amp circuit so it's pretty close to the limit in any case that's uh, that's and th this is again it's a plastic propeller and, and a looks like a, an acrylic housing here or clear plastic housing and then we have another bezel and this just helps to direct the airflow and also hold the motor in place but that's the uh, Conair 8 1875 hair dryer and I hope you've enjoyed it.